Welcome to Helen, Georgia, you guys. We are here with Continental riding the Ducati Scrambler. I do want to give you guys my first impression thoughts also on this ride. The Conti Road Attack 3 in the front, Conti Road Attack 4 in the back. Nice sport touring tread pattern on it. High 50s, low 60s today. I'm going to be recording the ride with Rever and you'll be able to see it at the end. This is uh, one of the incredible roads that's curated in the app. Pretty cool feature. Let's hear this stock exhaust. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is Andrew. It sounds good until everyone else starts. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's why I did it now. That's Andrew, you guys. This is uh, his bike. He works for Continental, as you can tell by his shirt. So those guys are definitely A-Pace there. <laughs> I am not an A-Pace while I'm uh, moto vlogging, but this thing has got some kick to it, you guys. All right, so while we're getting some rollers here, let me give you guys the lay of the land. We're hooked up with like all the riders in the group, which is about 10 of us, via Cardo's. Thank you, Cardo. We're riding on a bike here, courtesy of Continental. And the video is sponsored by none other than Rever, who is uh, helping us track our ride today. Oh boy, I know I, know I mentioned I rode the, <laughs> the scrambler once before just at a dealership but we didn't really have this type of pace for <laughs> for much of that time and it was like a 20 minute ride so i'm really excited to be able to actually get to see what it does in the twisties wow honestly this feels really planted in the corners i mean these are wide sweeping corners but it feels good there are a couple snakes on the road here, which I do want to avoid because I'm not very familiar with this route at all. Never ridden on the roads before. It feels smooth through these turns. So the Scrambler is um, on 800cc motorcycle. When I first got on it, I thought like it was 600cc and I was like, wow, it's got like a lot of punch. Like that's really good. And it still has a lot of punch even for an 800. So I'm not like mad about it. I don't think I would be trying to keep up with the sport bikes though on this thing. Hey you guys, look, is that a Supra? <laughs> sure is. Sounds great. I always worry about like, I love hearing the exhaust sounds, but I worry about what it sounds like for you guys in the video. Thank you, sir. High 50s, low 60s, which is what the weather feels like today. You definitely have to be mindful of warming up your tires. 35 miles an hour. Let's not look down at the speedometer. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these guys on super sports. We've been riding for 10 minutes and they already need a stretching break. <laughs> I'm just kidding you guys. I've been I've been on the sport bikes. So I know the struggle. <laughs> all right, looks like we're going to stop here for a few minutes. So, I will catch up with you guys when we're back on the road. Look at this view. So pretty. Got a hawk lighting in the air too. Nice. And it should uh, auto resume for us. That's nice. It's less things I have to touch with <laughs> my gloves on. Let's get some exhaust sounds. <laughs> While we get the stock exhaust on this thing, uh, it doesn't sound bad. It sounds like uh, not. It doesn't sound like high pitched. It sounds like deep and. I was about to say, deep and throaty. <laughs> it, it reminds me a little bit more of like the MT07 sound. The one nice thing about the Scrambler is I can flat foot this thing. The uh, Speed 400, when I was on the Triumph Speed 400, I couldn't flat foot that fully. But the Scrambler, the Scrambler, you can flat foot. This is this, this is a bike for me. It gives you like so much more confidence to be able to like touch the ground on both sides. I know you don't need to be touching the ground on both sides. Obviously, you can learn to ride by scooting your butt off the seat. But I got to tell you, as somebody who gets a lot of confidence, in her abilities to ride when she can touch both sides. Uh, it just, I prefer it, I prefer it. I would rather get like heeled shoes. Two, two feet on the ground just gives you four points of stability instead of three. You got two tires and a foot or two tires and two feet. While we're regrouping here for a bit, I did want to say something about the suspension on the Scrambler. So the suspension on this thing is a little bit um, stiffer in my opinion. I don't see an adjustment on the forks for suspension here. So maybe it's just preload, but you know, the suspension is a little bit on the on the stiffer side. I think if you're 
a little bit heavier than I am. Uh, I'm like around 120 pounds, more with gear obviously, but if you're more than that, like I think you'll be fine. But if you're lighter weight, just letting you know. All right, off we go. Ride is resumed. Now I feel like I have to talk about the suspension on every bike that I'm on. Out of the factory, they're usually like not programmed or not tuned for lighter weight riders. So if you're even lighter than me, you may find suspensions to be stiff in general, um, which was like an interesting observation for me when I was on the MT-07. People were saying like, oh, the stock MT-07 suspension, or like it used to be like a pogo stick, meaning very like jumpy and soft, and I got it, and I was like, I don't know, I think it's fine. One of the things I've learned about watching motorcycle reviews is that you want to watch like somebody like you in terms of like your build and riding style reviewing your bike so you could see like okay maybe their opinion is closer to what you would think the suspension feels like on it and then if you want to get a more well-rounded view of a bike like if you're seriously considering it or if you want to recommend it to somebody else watch a diverse group of riders so you're more aware about what another person's experience is like on the bike like i know i have a couple people telling me in the comments sometimes i'll hear like guys trying to get motorcycles for their girlfriends or their wives and they'll watch my videos to get like a women's perspective on it which is actually very thoughtful and nice and like big big brain thinking i love that we have to thank our lovely sponsor rever rever is a ride tracking app it's also a ride discovery app and it's also a ride community app rever does it all you can add your friends you can discover twisty routes you can pick how you want to get from point a to point b using a twisty route instead of conventional roads and the best part about rever is that they have started to map roads all over the world in fact even in romania like if you wanted to head to romania and use rever to get around you could absolutely do that you don't even need wi-fi because you can just download offline maps there is a free and a paid tier of rever to download offline maps you need to get the pro subscription i'll put a list of the paid and the free features that you have with rever but i think even as a free member if you just want to download it and try it out you can still get a lot out of it you know one thing that is uh, never going to be different on any naked bike that i get on is the wind noise and the wind buffeting yeah expect wind buffeting <laughs> on the ducati scrambler too all right let's see if we can get some good exhaust sounds of the scrambler i'll remove all audio effects it is a little bit windy today so that might affect how well you guys can hear the exhaust sounds pretty nice and twerky. One of the uh, interesting things I noticed while uh, doing a little bit more aggressive acceleration back there to show you guys the noise is that the scrambler itself is a smooth ride but when you accelerate like that you get quite a bit of vibration in the gas tank is where I feel it the most. It's not entirely unpleasant. <laughs> I know that sounds wrong that's not at all what i mean i mean the bike gives you good feedback on what you're doing it's a snappy response it's not laggy there's no ping on this uh scrambler is what i want to say i'll tell you what my first impression was because i made an instagram post on it so i can remember i said that it was the least pretentious ducati this bike seems tiny but it's mighty and it doesn't need to prove itself because it knows what it's got and it don't need no man. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel about the Ducati Scrambler. It knows what it's got and it don't need no man. That coupled with the fact that this bike is actually like low to the ground, mm, a beautiful combination. <laughs> I can never get this kickstand. <laughs> All right, we are wined and dined and lunched. <laughs> and ready to ride some more. I think this area, honestly, is, it would be gorgeous in the fall. All the trees, different colors. I mean, the roads are gorgeous now, but this is like early spring, so you know, trees that don't have leaves yet, so it makes it look a little bit depressing. Even Pennsylvania has like a region, it's called the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon, that is uh, similar to this, and 
it's gorgeous to vi visit up there in the fall the throttle response on this bike that it is very instant and like when you do twist the throttle the bike gives you feedback and that is by like the vibration in the gas tank is where i feel it. and i'm like gripping the tank right now pretty well with my thighs i'm not like putting weight on the handlebars very much at all i think it's actually a feature like a more newer rider would benefit from having because i remember when i first was on my ninja 250 i would constantly look down to see where my rpms were at so i would know when i have to shift like i, di I didn't have that sense with the bike to be able to tell when is the right time to shift gears and that's like okay as a beginner you eventually learn how to do that but i think that on this bike it would be easy to learn i wouldn't recommend this bike though for a a beginner at all but i would recommend this to someone that has like if you have any kind of motorcycle experience even if it's dirt you'd be fine on this i would definitely recommend it for a vertically challenged rider though such as myself because <laughs> uh i can touch the ground on this thing five foot four that is a 29 inch inseam if you measure to the ankle people have uh given me crap about that before that i don't tell them the pant inseam which i think is a useless metric to tell somebody when you're talking about bike heights all right you guys let me give you some thoughts on the beautiful ducati scrambler i think it's an overall pretty smooth ride huge fan of the fact that it's so low to the ground that even a five foot four person like me can flat foot it on both sides granted i am wearing my uh beautiful little <laughs> shoes with a heel but i think even if i was wearing my regular riding boots i would get a comfortable amount of foot down on either side of this thing for my weight the suspension is a little bit stiff but not unbearably so it's just definitely a, like it, it kind of feels like my mt07 which already has like a pretty stiff aftermarket suspension andrew is the suspension adjustable on the scrambler like the fort the front and the back or just the back uh, maybe preload Okay, that's what I thought, but I, I wasn't sure if the forks were adjustable. It looks like they have they something. Not. They are not, yeah. That, that's what I thought. I just wanted to confirm. Go one more click. Okay, so it could be it could be slightly softer, but it is almost maxed out. So, yeah, for I think if you're heavier than me, you'd be absolutely fine on this thing, but yeah. <laughs> I think, I think uh, bi bikes come tuned for, like, what, a 170-pound rider or 180-pound rider, I was told, out of a factory, usually. Some depends on the market they're targeting. Some bikes 150, 160, some 180, 200. Is that with gear you think, or like they just put the rider on there? It's probably without gear. Probably without, because they don't know how much gear. Yeah, ride. that's true. W with gear, you'd be fine. It's not like uncomfortably so. Although I don't think I would take this for a really long ride, just because again, it is a naked bike, so you get a lot of wind buffeting or a lot of wind on it, so you'll get fatigued more easily. Would not recommend this bike to a beginner even though it's not like jerky and there is like a little bit of a slack in the throttle before it like actually catches you get like this much slack uh but when you do actually accelerate like the the feedback is there it gets like a little bit vibrating in the tank which isn't necessarily a bad thing it's good to have feedback this bike packs a lot it looks tiny and compact but it's got a lot going for it and uh yeah it knows what it's got and it don't need no man plus it looks real mean from the back it kind of gives me cafe racer vibes right anybody else feeling like cafe racer vibes these are not these are not stock all right let's pull up our rever finish our ride and now we can play it and it'll give you like a little overview and there's there's like one part where we were like going back and forth <laughs> See, we, we actually did do a, the loop today, which is awesome. There you go, guys. My thoughts on the Ducati Scrambler. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!